Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Satish Pillai. I'm the uh, Deputy Incident Manager for the CDC uh, Zika response. And well, go ahead and start. Hi, everyone. This is Jane Terry with the National Safety Council, and thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon or this morning to um, talk about Zika and how your workforce uh, may be impacted. And um, I think the things you'll learn today will be helpful to you in your workplace and in uh, your everyday life as well. We have with us, lucky to have with us folks from CDC and NIOSH to present. We have Satish. Uh, Palai, who uh, has introduced himself from CDC, and also Jill uh, Shugart from NIOSH will be presenting today. You will have the opportunity, opportunity to ask questions by typing those in on your screen. And you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner there is a box there uh, with a smiley face next to it. You can type your questions in there at any time during the webinar, and at the end, uh, we will go through the Q&A at that point in time. Um, but thank you very much for, again, for attending today, and I'll turn things over to the CDC and NIOSH team. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Satish Pillai. I'm the Deputy Incident Manager for the CDC's Zika uh, response. and. Uh, uh, this afternoon, I will uh, give an overview of uh, Zika and some of our activities at CDC. Uh, and I will then turn it over to my colleague uh, from NIOSH. Um, so, next slide. Um, Zika is a uh, viral uh, disease that is spread primarily through the bite of the infected Aedes aegypti or Aedes albopictus mosquito. Many people infected with Zika virus won't have symptoms, will have only mild symptoms. However, Zika in pregnancy can cause birth defects. Uh, before 2015, Zika outbreaks had occurred in Africa, Southeast Asia, and the Pacific Islands. Uh, outbreaks uh, currently are occurring in uh, many countries, uh, particularly in the Americas, uh, Mexico, Central and South America, the Caribbean, uh, as well as in uh, the Pacific Islands, and off the coast of Africa in Cape Verde. Zika is spread through um, the bite of mosquitoes, uh, in particular the Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus mosquito, uh, from pregnant women to uh, their fetuses, uh, and can also be spread uh, via sex uh, from an infected male, uh, as well as uh, through uh, potential laboratory exposures. Other risks uh, could include uh, via blood transfusion and uh, potentially via uh, tissue or organ transplantation or uh, fertility treatments and potentially through breastfeeding. These latter are uh, theoretical possibilities. The most common symptoms of Zika are fever, rash, joint pain, and conjunctivitis or red eyes. Other symptoms may include muscle pain or headaches. Anyone who lives in or travels to an area with Zika and has not already been infected with Zika may uh, be uh, infected or at risk of infection. Um, however, as we noted at, uh, earlier, uh, in many cases Zika does not cause any symptoms or has very mild symptoms which last for a few days and perhaps up to one week in duration. In the rare uh, uh, instance of severe disease, uh, hospitalization uh, may be required. Uh, but as noted, uh, most uh, cases, uh, upwards of 80% of cases, are asymptomatic to uh, mildly uh, symptomatic. Uh, regarding pregnancy and Zika, as we had discussed a few slides earlier, Zika can pass from a pregnant woman to her fetus during the, uh, the pregnancy or right around the time of delivery. Uh, we still are uh, learning more about Zika and, and don't have uh, all the data yet to know how frequently this mode of transmission occurs. And um, one of the concerns with uh, Zika in pregnancy is that it is a cause of microcephaly, 
and other severe fetal brain defects. Microcephaly is the condition where the, uh, it's a birth defect in which the baby's head is smaller than expected when compared to babies of the same set, sex and age. Um, currently, there's no evidence that uh, previous in, uh, infection uh, with Zika will affect future pregnancies. Um, one of the problems uh, in uh, de is uh, determining the uh, link of Zika infections and how they affect fetuses is um, the detection of, um, of Zika among fetuses and, and infants uh, before uh, birth. Uh, and we continue to uh, learn more about how best to make the diagnosis of uh, Zika infection during pregnancy. Uh, the uh, other uh, conditions that may be associated with uh, infection during pregnancy include miscarriage, stillbirth, uh, as well as uh, the uh, 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 abnormal development of brain structures, eye defects, hearing deficits, and impaired growth. Uh, to date, there have been no reports of getting Zika through breastfeeding. Another potential complication associated with Zika is the Guillain-Barre syndrome. Uh, this uh, has been uh, strongly associated with Zika in, uh, in some studies uh, that have been conducted uh, in uh, Central and South America. And uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome, or GBS, is uh, an illness of the nervous system in which uh, a person's immune system damages nerve cells, causing muscle weakness and sometimes paralysis. Uh, Zika is diagnosed uh, based on a person's uh, recent travel history, uh, symptoms, and test results. Blood and urine tests can be used to confirm uh, the presence of Zika infection. Um, it is important to note that symptoms of Zika can be similar to other illnesses spread through mosquito bites, such as dengue and chikungunya. And uh, treat, there's no specific medication or vaccine for uh, infection due to Zika virus, and therefore treatment is uh, symptomatic with rest, uh, fluids, and hydration, and taking medications to help reduce fever and pain, such as acetaminophen or Tylenol. One of the most important things that we can do to help prevent transmission of Zika is by protecting oneself from the bite of mosquitoes. Uh, particularly during the first week of illness when Zika can be found in the blood. Um, and given that uh, the uh, Zika is primarily transmitted through mosquito bites, it's important to protect yourself and others. Uh, and so some activities that people can do to help prevent uh, mosquito bites is to control mosquito populations outside your um, home uh, or work residence, uh, not to leave doors open, and to use uh, outdoor insect spray uh, repellents uh, when, uh, pardon me, also, uh, outside um, insect sprays uh, made to kill mosquitoes in areas where they rest. And uh, what other activities you can do to control mosquito populations outside your work area include uh, emptying and scrubbing, uh, turning over, uh, and throwing out items uh, that hold water uh, at least once a week uh, because it's important to note that mosquitoes lay eggs near uh, these uh, receptacles that could, may contain water. And to tightly cover water storage containers such as buckets, cisterns, rain barrels, so that mosquitoes cannot get inside to lay eggs. Other things to do when traveling, Follow all suggestions to control mosquitoes outside your hotel, and also consider the following strategies to prevent mosquito bites, such as staying in places with air conditioning and windows and door screens. Uh, and when traveling, consider using bed nets if air conditioning or screen rooms are not available or if you're sleeping outdoors. It's important to uh, cover up wearing uh, long sleeve shirts, uh, and, and pants, uh, wearing a hat, potentially with mosquito netting, and in warm weather, uh, wearing lightweight, loose-fitting clothes. I'll always remember to uh, drink plenty of water and take rest breaks uh, in the shade and uh, watch for signs and symptoms of heat illness. 
but also uh, it's important to create a barrier between you and the mosquitoes using uh, clothing that has been treated uh, with uh, permethrin, uh, which can be uh, purchased, uh, and uh, not to use permethrin products directly on the skin. If you're treating your clothes yourself with permethrin, it's always important to use the product uh, and follow the product label instructions and find out how long that protection will last. When wearing insect repellent, always use an Environmental Protection Agency registered uh, insect repellent and use products with DEET uh, or um, uh, Picaridin, uh, IR-535, or oil of lemon, eucalyptus, or paramethane diol. And again, always follow product label instructions. Don't spray repellent on skin under clothing. And if you're also using sunscreen, make sure to apply the sunscreen before applying the repellent. Given that Zika can uh, also be transmitted through sex, uh, it is important to uh, protect uh, your partner. Uh, Zika can stay in semen longer than in blood or other body fluids. And most known cases of sexual transmitted, uh, transmission have been from an infected male to his sex partner. Zika can be transmitted before, during, or after symptoms began. And uh, pe people without symptoms can pass uh, virus to their sex partners. Uh, and the one way that we know that uh, you can eliminate the risk of not getting Zika from sex is by not having sex. We don't know how, exactly how long virus can stay in genital secretions, such as semen and vaginal fluids, uh, nor how long the virus can be spread through sex, uh, nor do we know if uh, sexual transmission of Zika virus poses a different risk of birth defects than mosquito-borne transmission. Pregnant women and their sex partners, male or female, who live in or recently travel to an area with Zika should use barrier methods such as condoms correctly from start to finish every time they have vaginal, anal, or oral sex, or not have sex for the duration of the pregnancy. In addition, uh, not having sex is the only way to eliminate the risk of getting Zika from sex and exposing the developing fetus to potential harm. This table uh, provides uh, guidance uh, for uh, partners uh, who uh, have recently traveled to an area with Zika and can also, uh, and in order to uh, potentially pr uh, protect their sex partners from infection. Uh, as you can see, if the traveler is male and had uh, been diagnosed with Zika illness, the recommendations are to abstain or use condoms for at least six months. For male and female travelers who, uh, for a male traveler who has been diagnosed with, uh, not diagnosed with Zika, uh, the recommendations are for condom or uh, use or abstinence for at least eight weeks. And for females, uh, irrespective of whether or they had been diagnosed uh, with Zika, but had traveled to an area with Zika, the recommendations are for condom use for at least eight weeks. Persons uh, who uh, live in an area with Zika can also protect uh, their sex partners from infection uh, by using uh, condoms uh, or abstaining from sex while uh, residing in an area with active transmission of Zika virus. Now, if you're pregnant, do not travel to an area with Zika. If you must travel, talk to your doctor or other healthcare provider before your trip. If you're trying to get pregnant, talk to your doctor or other healthcare provider before your trip. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you today. I wanted to talk a little bit with you um, and specifically highlight the co-branded OSHA NIOSH interim guidance that we have developed to protect workers from occupational exposures to Zika virus. This document contains information for both employers and employees, and it's broken up into four different groups of workers that may be at risk to Zika. 
You can also see at the bottom of the slide, this is the link where you can find this document. I'll start with uh, protecting outdoor workers. And uh, for outdoor workers, it's important and employers can inform workers about their risks of exposure to Zika virus. They can also provide insect repellents and encourage appropriate clothing. They can remove sources of standing water to eliminate areas where mosquitoes lay eggs in and around the workplace. Workers can use insect repellents with EPA registered active ingredients. They can wear clothing that covers hands, arms, legs, and other exposed skin. They can drink plenty of water, take rest breaks in shaded areas, and watch for signs and symptoms of heat illness. And here we're really talking about uh, watching for signs of heat stress. And I did want to note that we do have several resources on the NIOSH and OSHA websites uh, that cover heat stress, and those will be um, relayed to you in our last slide called Resources later on in the presentation. Next slide. Switching over um, from outdoor workers to the next group of workers, which is healthcare and laboratory workers, employers in this sector can ensure workers follow workplace standard operating procedures and use engineering control practices to prevent exposure to potentially infectious materials. They can ensure that workers do not bend, recap, or remove contaminated needles or other contaminated sharps. Properly dispose of these items in closable, puncture-resistant, leak-proof, and labeled or color-coded containers. Workers can follow standard infection control and biosafety practices, including universal precautions, including but not limited to hand hygiene and the use of personal protective equipment, or PPE. PPE may include gloves, gowns, masks, and eye protection. Laboratories should ensure that their facilities and practices meet the appropriate biosafety level for the type of work being conducted. Moving on to our third group of mosquito control workers. For workers in this sector, we do recommend that they follow the same precautions that we've recommended for general outdoor workers for protection against mosquito bites. However, workers in this sector may need additional protective clothing and enhanced skin protection. Workers who mix, load, apply, or perform other tasks involving insecticides may need additional protection to prevent or reduce exposure to hazardous chemicals. And finally, regarding our, our fourth group that uh, I wanted to mention out of our interim guidance, this is the business traveler group. And if you choose to travel to areas with Zika, we recommend that you strictly follow steps to prevent mosquito bites to protect yourself and your family. Even if you do not feel sick, travelers returning to the United States from an area with Zika should take steps to prevent mosquito bites for three weeks so they do not spread Zika to local uninfected mosquitoes. Men who have had traveled to an area with Zika but don't have symptoms should use condoms for eight weeks to protect their sex partners. And that guidance was relayed earlier by Satish as well. I wanted to call your attention here to our Zika, Zika travel information page. This is put together by CDC Travelers Health Group, and they do a wonderful job of uh, relaying all the information that you need to uh, find out if there is a Zika-affected area that you may be traveling to. We strongly encourage you to take a look at this website for more information. And also, uh, we do recommend that employers consider allowing flexibility and required travel to areas with active Zika transmission for any concerned staff. We do have some guidance for employers of workers with suspected or confirmed Zika. Employers should ensure that supervisors and all potentially exposed workers are aware of the symptoms of Zika. They should train workers to seek medical evaluation if they develop symptoms of Zika. 
and ensure that workers receive prompt and appropriate medical evaluation and follow-up after a suspected exposure to Zika virus. Finally, they should consider granting sick leave during the infectious period. Guidance for workers with suspected or confirmed Zika. Workers should get plenty of rest, drink fluids, take medicine such as acetaminophen, talk to a healthcare provider before taking certain medications, avoid mosquito bites during the first week of infection, and abstain from sexual activity or use condoms during sexual activity during and following infection. I did want to just pause here um, and let you know specifically what NIOSH has been doing for this response before I hand it back over to Satish who will talk more about the overall CDC response. So NIOSH has activated our worker safety and health team for Zika back in February and we have been providing technical assistance as needed to other federal agencies, labor unions, industry, and other worker groups often in partnership with OSHA. We've also uh, are in the process of developing fact sheets on these four specific worker groups as a follow-up to our co-branded guidance document. Those are currently in going through the clearance process and should be finalized soon. Per request of the cruise line industry, we've also developed a fact sheet and poster for their workers. We've also developed and conducted presentations to employers by request. And we've also developed and maintained the NIOSH Mosquito Born website and Zika subpage where these documents are housed and any um, forthcoming documents will also be housed. And that website will also be listed under the resources slide later on in this presentation. I also wanted to note that um, our OSHA staff uh, colleagues that we normally work with for Zika. They were not able to present today, unfortunately. However, we do have some SMEs um, available that we could put you in contact with. You have specific OSHA questions. And I just wanted to point out that OSHA has been a great partner so far with this response. Where appropriate, OSHA relates their standards to the recommendations and the co-branded guidance for various work sites such as the Bloodborne Pathogen Standard in Healthcare and Labs and also the Personal Protective Equipment Standard. OSHA has also developed a quick card for outdoor workers. That's a great reference. And um, again, that website is listed on the upcoming resource slide. I also wanted to mention that OSHA has conducted many stakeholder outreach activities, both with and without NIOSH, and they have provided critical technical assistance in the field. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Satish. Thank you. Um, so uh, in, in closing, CDC ha has been actively engaged uh, in uh, Zika-related activities for quite some time now. Currently, our emergen emergency operations center is activated uh, to our level one or highest level activation. And we have resources from throughout the agency that we are devoting to uh, addressing uh, Zika virus, both domestically and internationally. Uh, we're providing on-the-ground support uh, through technical assistance uh, in affected areas. Uh, and we're educating healthcare providers and the public about Zika. We are posting travel notices and other travel-related guidance uh, regarding areas that uh, have uh, Zika transmission. Uh, we've uh, provided laboratories uh, throughout the United States and internationally with diagnostic tests to help make the diagnosis of Zika virus. And uh, we are also distributing Zika prevention kits, which uh, contain materials to help reduce people's risk for uh, being bitten by mosquitoes and uh, reduce their risk of Zika infection. And these have been distributed uh, in U.S. territories, such as Puerto Rico. Uh, we continue our scientific mission of uh, understanding more of, uh, about Zika virus, uh, such as uh, studies to evaluate the persistence of Zika virus in semen and urine among male residents in the United States. And uh, we continue to work with uh, partners, uh, both within the government and outside the government, uh, and uh, with our state and local partners uh, to monitor and report cases of Zika, uh, conducting studies to learn more about the links of Zika and Guillain-Barre, 
working with our state partners, as I said, to improve plans for uh, preparedness uh, for Zika. And uh, at, we continue to uh, disseminate updated guidelines on testing and treatment of people with suspected and confirmed Zika virus infection. And uh, we continue to uh, report on uh, studies with uh, links to uh, uh, complications uh, of Zika virus uh, during pregnancy. The CDC uh, website, and particular the uh, www.cdc.gov backslash Zika, uh, has, uh, provides links to many resources that CDC has been uh, developing and, and aggregating uh, since the uh, emergency response uh, commenced. And uh, there are uh, many of the uh, uh, topics on uh, that also link to uh, NIOSH guidance as well. Uh, and with that, uh, we can take questions. Okay, so we've this is we've seen a couple of questions from uh, you guys. So if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box. So I'm going to go ahead and read the first question, and we will respond to it. So the first question is: Can a male be infected by having sex with another infected male or an infected female? Uh, Satish, should I answer that? This is Dr. Brooks. Please, John. That would be great. Sure. Hi. So this is John Brooks, and I'm uh, I work uh, at the um, I'm the senior medical advisor for the division of HIV and AIDS here at the CDC, and been in, uh, working very closely on developing guidance around sexual transmission and monitoring what we know. And yes, uh, a man can definitely acquire um, Zika from an infected uh, man or a infected woman through sexual contact. There have been at least one case report of each uh, example of male-to-male -male transmission and female-to-male -male transmission. However, we think that the risk of transmission is greatest from a man to his sex partners as opposed to from a woman to her sex partners. So, as uh, Satish noted in the slides, the time period that we recommend men who may have been exposed through travel or residency in the Zika-affected area is six months. The reason for that is uh, there are data indicating that Zika can persist in semen longer than it can in other body fluids. Uh, in women, however, uh, we recommend that sexual contact uh, with an infected or potentially infected woman, uh, you need to use condoms or abstain from sex only for eight weeks because to the best of our knowledge at this time, that, is a, a, that should be a time period that would allow the virus to uh, be um, taken care of by the immune system and be gone uh, so that after that point we believe sexual contact is unlikely to transmit the infection. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, the next question is where can permethrin be purchased? Hello, um, I'm Al Eastup with the uh, Vectors issue, it Vector Issues team. So permethrin can be widely purchased. Uh, permethrin sprays are available in hardware stores, grocery stores, and if you're looking for permethrin treatments for clothing, they tend to be a little less commonly found, but you can usually find them at um, sporting goods stores, camping stores, and even an occasional grocery store will have a permethrin clothing treatment available. And they're usually, like I mentioned, widely available. Okay, fantastic. The next question is, have any mosquitoes been found with Zika in North America or close to North America? Okay. Uh, as of this point, the answer is no. There have not been any positive mosquitoes uh, that have been found with Zika virus in North America. Of course, in Puerto Rico, which is not too far from North America, there have been quite a few collected, as well as Zika virus infected mosquitoes have been found in Mexico. But within the continental U.S., the answer is no. Our next question is, at the beginning of the webinar, you listed that women can catch Zika from men by having sex, but did not mention that men can catch the disease from women. However, later you mentioned the disease can be present in vaginal secretions. Can men catch the disease by having sex with an infected woman? Sure, this is Dr. Brooks again, and I'll, yes, a man can, uh, a man, uh, there has been a documented case of a man catching the disease from an infected woman. It was reported actually last Friday. Um, Zika has been um, detected, Zika, actually the Zika RNA, uh, through a method called 
uh, polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, has been detected in uh, vaginal fluids of a woman infected with Zika, and in an animal model, it's also been detected. Right now, however, we don't have any evidence that it persists in vaginal fluids the same way that it persists for, can persist for a number of weeks in men's semen. Okay, great. The next question is, how effective are the various methods in preventing mosquito bites to outdoor workers? So the methods that were recommended here with long, long sleeves, long pants, uh, use of EPA-approved uh, repellents, they can be extremely effective. They're the same methods the U.S. military relies on to protect soldiers in the field, but they really come down to the individual being very thorough with the application of those methods. Okay. Our next question asks about uh, the Utah case with the caregiver uh, getting Zika from the individual who passed away. Um, I, this is Satish again. Uh, the investigation is actively uh, ongoing. Uh, at this point, we don't have additional details as to the mode of transmission. Uh, there are uh, both uh, activities looking at uh, local uh, mosquito uh, populations as well as understanding better the uh, type of contacts uh, that may have uh, potentially uh, resulted in transmission. So at this juncture, we don't have that information, uh, but it is an area of active investigation. Okay. Our next question is, do we have any known cases of active Zika, and if so, where? Um, so uh, this, um, there's obviously active transmission of, of Zika in multiple countries uh, the, in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, in the United States, we've uh, had uh, transmission of, of Zika in the, uh, por uh, in the territories, uh, particularly in Puerto Rico. Uh, and uh, domestically, if, uh, if CONUS, uh, the continental United States, uh, CDC has a, uh, a, uh, is actively tracking uh, cases of uh, travel-associated or, or uh, uh, Zika infection. Uh, to date, we don't have a, uh, any confirmed uh, evidence of local mosquito-borne uh, Zika virus uh, transmission in the continental United States. But uh, again, as uh, my colleague ha has mentioned, there is active transmission in Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, as, as well as in American Samoa, and uh, we continue to work closely with our state and local partners to prepare uh, for uh, the time when there is uh, potential transmission uh, by mosquitoes in the continental United States. Thank you. Um, our next question asks, is there an incubation period between infection and the first symptoms if they appear at all? Uh, the t typical incubation periods are, are, are around uh, one, one week, um, give or take uh, a few days, but on, on average it's around a week. Thank you. Our next question asks, what measures are being taken for USA Olympians upon departure to Brazil and return to the U.S.? Uh, go ahead. This is Jill. I can just start off here. Um, NIOSH has worked really hard with OSHA to go ahead and put out our um, interim guidance for protecting workers, specifically in uh, different worker groups from Zika. And we, we worked hard to put that out um, back in April so that we could um, target a lot of groups before the upcoming season. And also, we did get um, some questions and concerns from uh, not only Olympians, but those um, in the delegation that were traveling over to Brazil. And so we don't have any um, specific 
recommendations other than our guidance, but I'll turn it over to Satish to see if he can fill in. Yeah, and then uh, in addition to what Joel just said, we have uh, colleagues in our uh, global migration uh, uh, division at uh, CDC who have been working with the uh, uh, United States Olympic Committee, USOC, in developing webinars and other types of education uh, materials for our uh, Olympians that are, are traveling this summer. Thank you. Our next question asks what Puerto Rico is doing to combat the spread of Zika to other countries aside from travel alerts. Uh, CDC is working uh, very, very closely uh, with our uh, colleagues in the Puerto Rico Department of Public Health, as well as other uh, federal agencies uh, to uh, um, essentially uh, conduct a uh, integrated uh, vector management program. There are efforts to uh, increase education in uh, communities on the mode of transmission, help uh, eliminate uh, standing water, some of the activities that we heard about earlier where uh, mosquitoes can breed and uh, there are um, activities in uh, distributing Zika prevention kits, which uh, I spoke about earlier, that contain items such as uh, uh, bed nets or uh, insect repellents uh, to help uh, reduce uh, mosquito bites. Um, so, uh, and as well as uh, working with the, um, uh, the Department of Health to uh, uh, follow uh, uh, women who might become infected during pregnancy and to ensure that they are uh, monitored during the course of their pregnancy and that uh, children that may, uh, th and that their children have uh, mo a monitoring uh, following uh, birth. And, and then I think, uh, I don't know, John, if you wanted to describe uh, any of the uh, issues with condom distribution as well in Puerto Rico? Yeah. Uh, so. We recommend, as uh, uh, Satish mentioned earlier, that uh, the best method other than abstaining is to use condoms uh, for uh, sex uh, during the prescribed time frames that we've given, which in Puerto Rico is actually a little difficult because it's hard to know, uh, you know if you've been exposed or had it symptoms, was it really the, um, did you really have illness or um, could it have been something else? And then even after that, t even if you think you've had illness or been, not been diagnosed after that time frame, is done, let's say eight weeks passes, we're not, we don't know for certain that that will make you immune so that you're not likely to be reinfected and possibly pass it on again. So in the advice on those time frames, I should make a point of saying is for people who are returning to non-endemic areas, that is areas where there isn't active Zika transmission. Now if a person is living in an area with Zika transmission, uh, couples have to make uh, some personal decisions about whether they would like to use condoms to reduce their risk. Their condoms are presently being distributed through um, special um, packs, they're called Z-Packs, that are being put together for pregnant women and distributed through WIC clinics and I think some Title X clinics as well. Uh, and those kits contain a small number of condoms and then women are instructed to, if they need more, they can get them uh, in the marketplace. New York City made an extraordinarily generous donation of over one million condoms uh, as well as um, technical expertise on how to distribute them to persons who may be at risk, prioritizing uh, pregnant women who remain our uh, population of greatest interest because of the uh, threat that an infection may pose to a developing fetus. Men um, who have pregnant women can also, uh, men who have pregnant uh, partners rather, excuse me, can also acquire condoms uh, through those same clinics and there's consideration presently about around further expanding the distribution of condoms to make them even more widely available. Thank you, John. Okay, thank you. Our next question asks, is the Zika virus also carried by birds like West Nile virus? Uh, would you uh, like me to answer? Yes. Go ahead, Ingrid. Oh, sorry. Um, so uh, this is Ingrid Rabo with CDC in Fort Collins. Um, and uh, to our knowledge, no, um, this is a different uh, transmission cycle. What Zika virus um, 
uh, typically in Africa has um, is a sylvatic cycle or jungle cycle with transmission be between uh, mosquitoes and non-human primates, which is a similar cycle as is found for yellow fever. Um, but what has been seen th during these outbreaks is a human to mosquito to human transmission. Um, so not not in the same type of setting with as as birds as amplifying hosts. Um, however, as far as the uh, additional um, search for reservoirs and uh, ecologic investigations are going, there's a lot, lot of work being done in um, areas with ongoing Zika virus transmission at the moment, but the mo predominant mode of transmission right now is human to mosquito to human. Thanks. Thank you. Um, our next question asks if everyone on the panel could please spell each member, member's name and his or her affiliation. So let's start with. Sure. Hi. Um, Jill Sugart, and that's um, S H U G A R T, and I am with NIOSH. Hello. Alden Eastep, A L D E N. Step E S T E P, and I am with the uh, Zika virus vector team. Satish Palai, S A T I S H, last name Palai, P I L L A I, uh, C D C. Um, this is Kieran Perkins, K I R E N, Perkins, P E R K I N S, and I'm with the Pregnancy and Birth Defects Task Force. On the phone. And this is Richard and Thomas. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, it's Ingrid Ra Ingrid Rabe with CDC. Um, that's I N G R I D. Last name R A B E, and I'm with the Division of Vector-Borne Diseases, CDC. And this is Richard Thomas from the Office of Occupational Medicine and Nursing at OSHA. I'm filling in for uh, Chris Brown, who is our representative from the Directorate for Technical Services and Emergency Management here at OSHA. This is John Brooks. Uh, I'm in the Division of HIV AIDS Prevention at CDC, and my first name is J-O-H-N, and my last name is B-R-O-O-K-S. Okay, our next question asks how deadly the Zika virus is. Um, I, I, I can start and then maybe Ingrid, you could, you could follow on. Uh, as we said at the outset, the vast majority of infections with Zika are uh, without symptoms or uh, asymptomatic. Are, uh, uh, the biggest concern is infection during pregnancy uh, due to the risk to the developing fetus, as Dr. Brooks has already alluded to. Uh, that being said, there are instances reported of uh, deaths, whether those are individuals that died of a uh, uh, unrelated condition and died with Zika versus having died from Zika, I think is uh, uh, not always uh, clear. Uh, but there are reports of individuals that have died and have had Zika virus infection at the time of death. Uh, but again, I think the most important points are uh, most infections, the vast majority of infections are asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic, and the highest risk group is pregnant women uh, due to the concerns for the developing fetus. But Ingrid, do you have any uh, comments or additions to that? Um, I think you've summarized it well. I think the one, and I'm not sure if you mentioned that, but the one other severe um, association with Zika virus is Guillain-Barre syndrome, um, which is a severe neurologic manifestation, although even in those cases as well, it has not generally been fatal. Um, and as mentioned, you know, with the, the um, sporadic or uncommon reports of deaths uh, related to Zika where, where Zika infection was suspected, it's not clear whether um, the, the Zika infection was kind of coincidental or not necessarily the primary um, causative factor in the fatality. And, and of note, in the areas where um, there is a lot of Zika virus activity at the moment, many of those areas are heavily affected by dengue as well, which is known to cause severe um, disease manifestations too. So um, it is a little difficult to, uh, to know exactly to what extent Zika has contributed to fatalities in those rare instances. Thank you. 
Um, our next question asks, if a family member asked you if it's safe to get pregnant right now, what would you say? Um, this is Karen Perkins, and I can answer that. Um, pregnancy is a, a deeply personal decision to conceive a deeply personal issue, so um, there are many things that need to be taken into consideration um, when making that decision, um, and that's true for both here in the continental U.S. as well as in areas where um, Zika is um, endemic, um, and also, I would recommend that um, any people who are considering um, conceiving should um, discuss their um, intentions with their healthcare providers as well. So at this point, we don't have any more questions that are pending, so if you have any last questions, please type them in so that we can respond to them. All right, thanks everybody for participating today. Again, this is Jane Terry with the National Safety Council. I hope that this information was uh, helpful to you and will be helpful uh, in your places of work and also in your home and communities as well. We, w we have recorded this webinar and we will also we'll make that available as well as the slides. And I will um, send out an email to those of you who registered for the webinar with that a link to where this information can be found uh, on, on the website. Um, and feel free to share it with, um, with others as well. Uh, again, thank you so much for your time today and have a wonderful and safe day. <laughs>